Hello Grade 12s, we meet again in our series on work, energy and power. Today, we'll be focusing on the relationship between work and energy. We will also discuss the positive and negative work of a system. Let's watch as Mr. Tiniko Kosa defines energy for us and explains how work and energy relate to each other. We are now going to talk about energy, okay? Now, what is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. In other words, without energy, there can be no work that we can do, all right? When work is done on a system, energy is transferred from one form to another. Now, that is crucial. Um, when, when, when we're doing some work, for example, pushing objects, the energy that we are using in, 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 that could be stored energy in our bodies, it's now transferred into the object is moving, so some kinetic energy, okay? So work is done when, when work is done, energy is transferred from one form to another. Okay, so we will talk more about this as we proceed because we'll be talking about these different types of energies. Um, just just uh, pay attention and you will see what we mean by energy being tra transferred from one form to another. And we also know that this energy is found in different forms. It can be heat energy, it can be light energy, it can be sound energy, can be kinetic energy, can be potential energy, can be mechanical energy, can be chemical energy, can be all sorts of energies, okay? So th this energy is found in different forms. So here I just have a few, all right? So if you see light, you must know that light is energy. So you hear sound, sound is energy, all right? Light or energy is a scalar quantity. Hmm, nice one. If energy is a scalar quantity, that will mean that work is also a what? A scalar quantity. Do you want to know what a scalar quantity is? Well, we've done this long time back in our mechanics lesson. But to, f just for revision, remember that scalar is any physical quantity that has only magnitude but no direction, okay? It doesn't have direction. It has only magnitude. We can only talk about how big it is. We can only talk about the size of this uh, physical quantity, but we cannot talk about the direction in which it is moving or facing because it doesn't have direction. And this energy is measured in joules. Wow. Remember when we started earlier, we said work measured in joules. Energy measured in joules. You can see now the interrelationship between work and energy. It's something you cannot separate. It's actually more of one quantity, but you can at some point separate it. Hence, we even use the same unit to measure it. Work measured in joules energy measured in joules, interrelated quantities in physics. Let us review what we know about work. Positive work is the work done on an object to move it in the direction of the force parallel to the movement. We also know that negative work is the work done to stop or slow down the movement of an object. Negative work is usually done by a frictional force or any opposing force. The following example illustrates the fact that positive work done on an object increases the kinetic energy of that object. In this example, the force of gravity does positive work. A tennis ball of 0,5 grams is dropped from a height of 15 meters above the ground. Determine the initial and the final velocities as well as the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy. The initial velocity of the tennis ball is zero because the tennis ball was dropped, which means it fell from rest. 
we can determine the final velocity by applying the equations of motion. We must carefully choose an appropriate equation. The initial velocity is 0 meters per second. The gravitational acceleration is 9,8 meters per second squared, and the height is 15 meters. When we substitute correctly into the appropriate equation, like this, the final answer is 17,15 meters per second. Now we can see that the velocity has increased from 0 meter per second to 17,15 meters per second. This implies that there was an increase in kinetic energy of the tennis ball. The force of gravity does positive work on the tennis ball. So the tennis ball moves in the direction of the force of gravity. And there is an increase in the velocity of the tennis ball. Let us now calculate the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy of the tennis ball to see if the positive work done by the force of gravity increases the kinetic energy of an object. The mass of the tennis ball is 0.5 grams. The initial velocity is 0 meter per second, and the final velocity is 17,15 meters per second. When substituting correctly into the kinetic energy formula, the initial kinetic energy is 0 joules, and the final kinetic energy is 0,74 joules. So we can see that positive work done does not just increase the velocity of the object, but the kinetic energy as well. At this stage, we understand positive work, but what about negative work? Look at this, a ball rolling on a smooth level surface for a few meters and then onto a sand bed. What do you think will happen to the velocity of the ball when it enters the sand bed? The ball slows down on the sand bed. The work done by the sand bed on the ball is negative work. The negative work reduces the velocity of the moving and its kinetic energy. At this stage, we can deduce the work energy theorem from the examples discussed. This states that the net work done on an object by a net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This brings us to the end of our lesson on work and energy, grade 12s. You'll also find more information about work at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video. Take care.